Hi guys, Alexia here, Team Shady Graveler, and I'm here today with uh, Rest Day 6 update. As usual, we're going to have, it's going to be in two parts. It's going to be a travel update, and then it's going to be uh, a training update. Again, as now is the trend, um, let me say something first about my background first, for those who might be interested. So this is actually one of the, of my pictures that I love so much because of so many things. Um, one, just the location, but then again, um just what the moment the picture captures speaks so much to me it's about that road ahead of you um that you don't know what is around the corner and you're cycling towards the discovery and you turn the corner and maybe you discover something new and then the road disappears again ahead of you and then you ride until the next corner so in essence that's sort of the beauty about cycling it takes you places that you have yet to go okay sometimes of course you cycle around the roads you know but i think this picture embodies <clears throat> the adventure spirit of cycling and this picture was taken again. You remember last week, um, I mentioned uh, a picture about um, Keep the Gitch Tea Factory because we had like the green background of tea. So this road leads there. Uh, this was uh, taken uh, during um, our ride in Moa, uh, sorry, in Mau Forest. Uh, so from Bomet, we went all the way to molo and back and the gentleman in the picture is called mr wire wire himself patrick willy uh really cool dude uh nowadays he doesn't ride his bike so much he got married so i could say so much about that dynamic and i'm sure you cyclists you male cyclists out there know <laughs> how that works so let me leave it at that yeah but a really really cool guy patrick i've dragged him on so many of my escapades the most famous of which uh, was uh, our ride to moyale yeah because it was tough but then again also last year i went around the lake on my tour with him so yeah, that's Mr. Patrick Willey, but great picture. <sighs> yeah, you, you look at these pictures and it brings back so much memories. I think the picture will change while we are going through um, today's uh, update. So let's see what will come up next. I'm, I'm going to try and make it short because last week went a bit long and uh, one of you uh, pointed that out and I agree, totally agree with you. So, okay. Travel update. <clears throat> Today I had uh, my visa appointment. It was at 8.30. And as is typical nowadays in Kenya, a lot of uh, the embassies don't handle um, the, um, the actual uh, initial paperwork. So there's a third party, uh, a company that's delegated to do that or given that job. So yeah, so I went to the offices, uh, presented my papers, my papers were accepted, they're in the system, and uh, if I show you this, let's see what will come up. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, all right. So this is the email I got today, your application transferred to the consular authority. So I guess uh, 
this is the company. The company is called TLS Contact. They're the ones who receive your papers. Uh, and then I guess they pass them on to the embassy. So they say that your visa application will be sent to the consular authority for processing. You can track the status on the website. If you go to the website, uh, this is the visa process. Had I logged in? I think I'd logged in. Uh, if you, let's see. Okay. Let's, let's just try and log in quickly. At, at Look.com. Yep. Uh, here we go. And let's see if it work. Okay, so that's what we get. I click on view group. That's the application. So there was, that was my, so this is the center address. This is in Westlands. Um, my appointment was today at 8.30. This is my order I paid. As I told you, uh, it's about a hundred bucks. I think about 16,000 shillings. So your contributions have really helped. Uh, like this cost was not captured in my um the budget that i gave because on the budget i i i put like the things i really really needed help with so but again um the contributions have been have gone over and above what i requested so some of that money helps pay for things like this and then <clears throat> so this is i can say check and that's where we are. So this is the application, appointment confirmed, application documentation confirmed, meaning my documents are good. Application transferred to consulate. So it's at the embassy now. So someone at the embassy will look at the papers and decide, okay, uh, this looks like legit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, issue visa. So they'll issue the visa. Then the passport goes back to TLS. And then I go pick up the passport. So I'm hoping this whole process um, finishes before the 29th because that's when I have I have um, planned to travel on the 29th, which should be a Sunday in two weeks' time. So anyway, guys, that's the um, travel update. So hopefully uh, all goes well. Uh, again. Next Monday during uh, the 6th, 7th rest day, uh, we'll update this. We'll see how far it has gone. Sour. Ah, yeah. All right. That's email. That's gone. So on the training update, very quickly, we start with what Strava uh, is talking about. And uh, this is uh, the, current, the, the current training week that has just ended. Today is 15th September, so today is 16th, so the training week just ended yes, on Sunday. So you can see there's been, even Strava says consistent training, so I can't argue with that. Uh, these two weeks we really outdid ourselves, as I said earlier, yeah, um, in terms of volume. Uh, now it's more of like consistent. I think on average, our average is maybe, I would say around three, 300, 320 would be the average of all this. So that's Strava. When we go to training peaks, this is what we get in training peaks. Uh, let me move this so that everything fits in the window. All right. So we have, this is, remember, this was pre-training. So this is training week one, training week two, training week three, training week four, training week five. And this is training week six. So on training week six, you can see fitness has gone up by three. We dumped some fatigue from, from 108 to 97. And our form improved from 41 to 27. And the, there's... A big reason why we dropped the fatigue uh, 
end the form. Uh, I'll show you in the next, uh, when you look at the training log. So yeah, so again, training picks shows that um, the general uh, improvement on the fitness. I don't think we'll reach 100, which is our target. It's always good to have a target. So I don't think we'll, we'll hit 100 uh, because uh, 85, so maybe week seven, if we really push it, maybe uh, we are not going to go to 90, definitely not. So maybe 87, 88, week eight, 90. So we'll hit 90. Not a bad target. Yeah. Remember, we are going to start tapering. I'm going to talk about this a bit uh, shortly. We are going to start tapering. So the volume is going to go down. So the fitness will not jump as much. Yeah. So you saw over here, like here, the fitness jumped by 10. Remember I told you the fitter you get, the, the less incremental the, 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 the jumps will be. Uh, because there's less room for improvement, yeah? Uh, so over here, we are sort of, this week one, we are sort of almost untrained because at that, at that point in time, I was riding once, uh, uh, like just over the weekend. Uh, but so, as, so that first week when we pick up that big volume, boom, you get fitness jump of 10. Then the next week again, another big volume, boom another fitness jump of 10, 64 to 74. Then, uh, so now you see, as I'm approaching like fitness that is limited by my physiology, the, the, that graph now starts plateauing, curving off. So you see 74, 78, that's only four, then 82, that's only four again, 82, 85, three, yeah? So I'm seeing week seven will be 87, 88. Week eight will be 90. 90 is good. I mean, uh, I don't want to be Superman. So anyway, uh, that's how Trainer Road um, uh, sees it. And the reason for, for dropping this fatigue and, and improving in form, because form improved from minus 41 to minus 27, is because of this. When we come to our training log, this is last week's, uh, this is training week six. This is last week's uh, training calendar. So you see that last Saturday, just before uh, the race, before the Memorial gravel race, I decided to rest. Because I could feel the fatigue and um, I didn't want to like risk injuring myself. So I decided to sit out. So, and that's one of the reasons why you saw over here, we have dumped a lot of fatigue. Well, it's not a lot, but substantial fatigue. And then the form improved. So yeah, as I said, I think I even mentioned in our last update that I'll... I might sit out one day just to, to, to rest a bit, give the body a break. But anyway, guys, all in all, this is how our week looked like last week. I actually increased the volume by 100 kilometers. So from 186 on this week, week five, to 283 uh, in week six. And we had, this, this was a zone two, this was a structured, this was zone two, this was structured, rest, right to the start, warm up, race, warm down. Uh, I'll talk about, uh, I'll talk a bit about the race just now. And that's how our week looked like. Uh, today was supposed to be a rest day. I managed to squeeze in a, a, a swim. Remember again, last week I mentioned that I haven't swum for a while. And uh, it's actually almost two months since I swam and I wasn't, feeling good about that so uh, I decided to squeeze in a, a, a swim it was really beautiful beautiful swim uh, well great weather today was a, a hot day in Nairobi 
So um, managed to do 1,800. I missed um, the watch, missed 100 meters. Uh, but um, yeah, that's that's the pool at USAU. Uh, yeah, for for those who don't know, I'm in school. I might talk about this maybe as we wind up uh, after the championships, just to tell you a bit more about that. But yeah, so this is the USAU pool, really nice pool. A bit cold, but uh, not too bad. Mm, so yeah, I managed to get in um, a, sw a swim today. That was really nice. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, just very quickly, maintaining progress. Uh, Dump fatigue, 100 kilometers more than last week. So the highlight was the solo race. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, yeah. Okay. So the highlights of the week uh, last week was the Sule gravel race. And uh, here we go. And as you can see from just the, the name of the, of the whatever, we got first uh, masters and 13th overall. So I'm glad I rested. Uh, and I think that made some difference uh, compared to my race uh, in the, at the forest. You remember, you remember here two weeks ago, we had a race, the forest MTB ITT. Uh, and the day before I went for a 51 kilometer ride. So definitely your legs are not as fresh. Uh, and I think maybe in the forest, I could have been maybe just marginally faster uh, I say this because there's a, a guy called John Cowan. <laughs> we call him Cow, the Cow. And he beat me by just a few seconds in the TT. And I was not happy about that. It's it's very friendly rivalry, yeah? So, uh, and that's the only reason why I'm bringing this up. So, I think if I hadn't done this uh, 51 kilometers on Saturday, I could have got a few seconds on him. Anyway, so that was, that, yeah, Mr. Kao. So, uh, on Sunday, it was all about revenge. <laughs> but anyway, guys, yeah. Nice race. Great loop. Uh, well done uh, to Velonos. Um, it was well, uh, one of the well-organized races. Well, the races are actually well organized. The only thing is, I think, because it was a loop, it's easier to manage. So it was managed well. Um, less chances of getting lost. So it was really, really good. But anyway, there's not, a, not much to say about it. Yeah. As I've said in the, in the, on the Strava, it was a really good outing. And I was really, really happy that I managed to hold power we did like three loops of about, uh, each loop was what? About 30, 14 kilometers. And I managed to hold power, decent power on all those three loops without really fading. And on the climbs, because there was a climbing section. So this is the full loop. You can see that. You start with sort of like a downhill. So you can see the speed we are carrying, about 31 kph average. And then you have like sort of like an uphill. You can see the speed drops from 31 to 13 kilometers per hour. And on that, on, on that uphill, I managed to hold power. Normally I fade on those climbs, but on Sunday, even on the third uh, loop, you hit the climb and you put in the power and the legs don't complain as much. So the training is definitely working, yeah? So you can see that over here, the first... So remember, these are fresh legs, eh? And I did, I did not even... This is the first loop, fresh legs. I did not even get my fastest climbing time. Uh, 8.53 at 2.60, 3 watts. Second loop, 
I dropped from 8.53 to 8.27. So that's almost uh, 20 seconds at 275 watts. So you see, the legs are definitely not complaining. And then on the third loop, I do almost the same time as on the first loop, 260 watts at 8.55. So all in all, it's one of those events where, yes, you know, you're training and you're expecting to do well, but when you actually see the performance, it really psychologically boosts you. Like, you, you know that you have done the work and the body has the training in it and it will show. But when you see it this way, it's a really, really positive uh, boost. So I was happy about that. Again, we are out near the Kibiku Forest, beautiful place to cycle. Although I would, I would those those who are watching this and you have access to to go to Kibiku, I always say uh, go with company. Don't go by yourself. Twos or threes uh, always um, um, re advised, recommended. But beautiful place. So you have the forest, you can ride in the forest, or you can ride out in Kedong, in the valley. So the, the trails are nice. Uh, um, different character of trails all in the same area, yeah? So let me just show you some of the pictures. What else can I say about this? Yeah, so I waited hour, it was 244, really good. If I look at, um, again, at the Forest MTB, I waited average was 2.45. Remember I told you that um, my FTP now, I feel is about 2.50, 2.60. So that reflects it, yeah. So 2.45, two weeks ago, and 2.44 uh, on Sunday. So generally, that's where the power is. Uh, that's Charles uh, giving us the race briefing. You can see that forest, Kibiku forest behind him. Really beautiful place, by the way. Yeah. Although you don't want to ride there when it's it's wet, it's it's uh, muddy and red. It's like the red the red soil and uh, yeah. So that's Charles giving a briefing. Those are the the shadies. These are the shady popes. <laughs> Uh, so this is the Irishman, original Irishman <laughs> from Ireland, <laughs> Shane, and this is the, the the Mountie, yeah, from the from the land of what do they, what do they call it? Uh, maple syrup. Uh, that's strong. Eight thousand. Sometimes it's eight thousand. Sometimes it's ten thousand. Yeah, and that's myself. According to them, I've I've shed weight. And I think I have uh, on the scale. Now it's maybe about 81, 82. Typically, I'm 85, 85, 84. So anyway, that's pre-race. That's again race briefing. Um, that's Charles giving us stories. That's the bike. Um, I obviously during the race I couldn't take uh, many pictures. Uh, and the organizers haven't released any new pictures. So that's Shane finishing. I finish in front of him, one of the few rare times. And then that's Troy finishing. Again, I finish in front of him, one of the few rare times that happens. Uh, yeah, that's them. I don't know. Uh, let's see if you can get a sound bite here. Okay, we can get a sound bite. It's okay. Um, yeah, that's the finish. So, um, that's Troy complaining about his tooth being broken. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't broken. It was just some dirt on his tooth. So there we go, guys. Uh, in the Masters, I beat Mr. Cowan. Uh, by what four minutes? It's not bad. I think also the terrain, the the the, um, the race uh, suited me more. Um, I'm not so good on really technical stuff, and the forest was quite technical. So I think John is a bit better than me on the technicals. These ones were more like just open gravel roads, uh, and <clears throat> the climbs also. It's 
one climb. You you start it and it's one climb. So it's not like up, down, up, down, up, down, which is what the forest was, yeah? So I think I've mentioned that, that um, I prefer that. So that was the master's results. So did well. And if you look overall, the first guy, look at what Jordan did. Jordan had an average of 30 kph, one and a half hours only. And I took, what, 148. So he beat me by 18 minutes. So, but then look at the, the, the age gap. He's 20-something. I'm 51. So the age gap is 20, 20, 25 years at least, or 20 years at least. So not too bad, yeah. But there you go. Masters, first Masters man, and then Shane comes in, veteran, blah, blah, blah. So that's it. And that was the poster for the race, Sule, special guy. We remember you, Sule. Never be to be forgotten, yeah. And one of the few photos we have got so far from the organizers, uh, I think that's, if I'm not wrong, that's Bill Clinton, number 29, 27, I don't know who that is. Then following then me, then uh, you see Shane behind me. So yeah, okay guys, fine. That's um, that's pretty much it, yeah. Uh, that was the race. So I'll just quickly go over what we are expecting this week. We are starting training week seven tomorrow. Again, two zone two uh, rights. Um, one, so it will either be two structured or one structured and one Zwift race. We'll see how that goes. Again, I'm going to sit out one day. We are going to start. So this is going to, this is now, um, part of the beginning of the taper. Yeah. Because, so this is, um, as I said here, over here, uh, Remember, we have week seven and we have week eight. We travel at the end of week eight and then we just have one week. So we are racing at the end of week nine. Yeah. Uh, but we travel at the end of week eight. And then that week in, um, in, in, in Belgium will just be like sort of acclimatizing, getting, uh, figuring out the bike that I'm going to use, getting used to the bike. I'll go out maybe on two or three rides just to get used to the bike. Uh, that's, that's what will be happening in week nine. So right now, I would say we have started the taper um, uh, period. So this coming week, again, I'll sit out one day. Uh, week eight, I might sit out, I'll sit out one day and reduce um, maybe the volume and just do maybe two or three high intensity, maybe some Zwift races. And then week nine is just riding in Belgium, getting ready, getting used to the bike. Yeah. So that's it. And then again, guys, remember I told you at the end of week eight, there's a, a race in Nairobi. It's called the Grand Nairobi Bike Race. And let me see if I can get, uh, here it is. And, uh, it's going to be, I want to see what kind of power I'm going to hold. That the 29th, the reason the 29th and I travel 29th, uh, the plan is travel 29th evening if the visa comes. So, um, um, yeah, the race will be a very good gauge for, for I'll have rested a bit more. To see, uh, will be a very good gauge to see what kind of power we can hold. If we can be around again 250 to 60, that will be really, really, really nice. And that's it, guys. Uh, again, uh, on the fundraiser, uh, very kind of you guys. There are people who are still sending in uh, their pledges. Thank you so much. It really, really helps. You don't know how much, but it really, really helps. Like, there's so much I could say that I don't think is necessary to say. Those who know, know. Um, 
maybe in the debrief when we, we when we close when we come back home and we just close this chapter i might mention something but um thank you very much that's all i can say because it, it means a lot to me thank you for the support it means a lot okay i am not going to keep this long um guys stay tuned stay shady see you next monday rest day seven or eight one of them doesn't matter cheers have a good night bye bye